So how many of you guys know of Poncho? <laughs> how many of you guys are active Pretty users? Oh, come on, you guys. All right. Uh, anyway, so Poncho is a weather cat. And we recently launched on Facebook back in April at the FA conference. We were part of the keynote. So we were invited to make something as original and interesting and quirky and funny as possible. Um, so this is where, what we think about Poncho. Uh, we think mobile is very interesting. Messaging is also very interesting. And we do think that this is the future. This is where we are focusing on. And that's where we're going to be. So a little bit about Poncho first, though. Uh, we originally started about three years ago as an email and SMS platform. Uh, just for the United States, originally just only New York, and we just grew outward throughout the United States. Uh, and the model is built heavily around editorial content. So we had uh, editorial writers for each region talking about the weather in ways that kind of make sense for each region. So the way that somebody in California would talk about the weather versus New York would be very different. Looking at how in California it's always sunny, in New York the weather's always shit. Um, it's true, it's true. Um, but then uh, we started growing, and of course, you know, we wanted to, to step up our game and make things more visual, more fun, and more playful. So we also launched an iOS app and an Android app earlier this year. Um, and at the same time, we got invited to, to try to launch a chatbot. And we knew nothing about chatbots at that point. Um, so yeah, anyway, so we're really focused on mobile messaging. Um, you can actually look here. This is a chart from Business Insider, where messaging apps have actually taken over uh, about the middle of this year uh, over any other social network. So more people now are actually engaged with messaging content than social media content. And there are a lot of platforms, Facebook being the obvious one at 1 billion, uh, WhatsApp at 1 billion, WeChat is also close to 1 billion monthly active users, and there's so many other uh, platforms and partners and everybody else coming online. You know, Kick is a good one. You know, Skype has a very good platform. There's also Alexa. Google is also getting into this with Google Allo and Google Home. So we're really, really, really curious to see what we can do next. Um, yeah, and as I said, messaging is the new content. We find that as a very interesting distribution channel. And we want to deliver native content. And it must be, it's something that is a big problem for brands, and it must be solved for them to succeed. So this is how we've been kind of looking at the, the scope of uh, messaging and chatbots. Uh, originally, Google Search was the big platform. SEO was a big deal, and a lot of good companies started coming out of that, including Demand Media and Bleacher Report. Next was the social wave with Facebook. Sites like BuzzFeed, Huffington Post, Vice have all figured out social strategies through viral sharing, through likes, through you know any other type of means. And of course, with messaging, we want Poncho to be one of the well-known brands and well-known companies on the messaging platforms. So here comes Poncho. Uh, as I said, we started out as a daily email and SMS service. Pretty straightforward. Uh, we also launched on the weather app. And of course, design was also a big functionality for us because anybody can talk about the weather. But if somebody can make it playful and interesting to make that fun daily experience super amazing, that's important for us. So we focus heavily on design as well as content. Um, and of course, the bots. So uh, we've been trying to make this fun and interesting as much as possible. And as I said, we launched at F8 in April. Dave Marcus gave an amazing presentation on stage showcasing how we launched and some of the functionality that we did. And this was us sitting in the war room in a little San Francisco Airbnb during the launch, trying to make sure the servers stay up and working with Facebook partners over uh, Messenger, trying to make sure everything works. And then, of course, after launch, you just have to party. Um, so there's a lot that we've been learning trying to figure out how to do. Uh, when we launched, we only had about four to five weeks to really figure out how to put all this together. At that point, we decided, let's keep this as dumb as possible. We don't need AI. We don't need NLP. We don't need anything fancy. All we need to do is write out enough series of triggers to match on what's possible. So whether in New York, what's the temperature? Is it raining? We can write out very simple scripted triggers to, to make those answers. Um, and it worked. But we had to focus on the next part, which is how do we actually make it more fun and intuitive? Um, at the same time, we also knew that there'd be a lot of people trolling the bot. So we built a lot of uh, functionality around naughty words, bad words, profane words, and trying to capture that. So if people try to troll the bot, we'd be able to correct the user, call them out for it, and try to divert them back into the core messaging experience. Um, and then for everything else, because weather is just one part of it, we try to add in a lot of different conversation flows, such as a dating flow, guacamole recipes. Um, I think there was a sing-along that we also uh, wrote in. Um, and that's fine. That, that kind of makes it fun. But the core experience was weather, and you know, that's where we had to improve. So we started looking at where we can get better at, at that as well. So we publish a live chat feed uh, that we can look at 
that can show anything and everything that a user is talking about. So we can see when a user is getting an answer correctly or if you know we've responded incorrectly or there's a misalignment in how we actually talk to the user. Um, and it's been really good for us. And in just a single month, we're able to correct so many bad behaviors, so many bad triggers, and improve some of our NLP systems in order to respond more intelligently. Um, and this is just a kind of a more detail of our uh, live feed that we are able to look at. So, you know, for us, we actually see real time what the user is doing and how it looks to them. Uh, we also built a bot CMS because, as I said, we have a team of editors. So we looked at what is the most simplest way for editors to write content without having to deploy it in code, without having to wait for one engineer or whatever to push content into it. So we found a, a format called RiveScript. Uh, which is a really nice, simple chat syntax, very similar to Markdown. And it was the easiest of all the different bot syntaxes or even a custom syntax that we even thought about doing. This was the most simple solution for a team of editors to learn very quickly. Most bloggers, editors these days know a little bit of HTML, so it wasn't that hard for them to figure out trigger and response, and maybe some syntax for buttons or an image or whatever else. Um, so this CMS has been very useful for our team to test content and then be able to publish it out once we're ready. And so this is just a full view of our content management system. So we even built in a side preview bar so they could test it, see how things are working, make sure all the triggers match up. So you know, making sure things here like uh, this array, all the different types of ways that somebody could say a cat, and then catching all the different responses to it. Sometimes we even do emojis. Not always. Uh, But when we look at the content, we look at how users interact. We think about this as a network module or a network node. Uh, we treat all these interactions as a, a, as a network. And users are going to go through it. They're going to shift around. They're going to find all these different points as they play and try to message. And a lot of users, of course, are going to try to troll and break the bot. But once users get past that, then they start understanding how to interact with the bot. So you know, for instance, people can start talking about the current weather. They can start talking about tomorrow's weather. Maybe they just start cursing at it. Maybe they ask uh, some other questions related to it. And maybe at some point, they find some other conversation flow about love advice or dating or, or something else. And so we built a, a tool over the summer to help understand and analyze our network effects. Uh, and this is just kind of a map interface of our core network nodes. So you can see over here, there, like most of this in the yellow is weather-related content. This over here is kind of miscellaneous banter. And of course, there's a lot of these other triggers around here that match on things that we could possibly have the bot respond to. But you can see over time, most of the users tend to congregate around the core experience. Um, but the reason why we did this is because we actually are concerned about stats and metrics and all that stuff. You know, We are a fledgling company, just like many of you guys are. We've got to raise money. We've got to figure out our, our strategy and everything else. So the, the better that we can increase engagement, the less we can reduce our bounce rate, the better. So. Uh, this is part of our tool. So we can see a lot of our rules and triggers and be able to say, OK, this is you know, our forecast subject message that goes out in the morning. We can see here it has an impact of a global type. We can actually then start understanding how things work through the system. So if we were to change a trigger or some other content behind that or prompt a user slightly differently to go into the next part of the flow, we could see a potential growth of almost 5% and reduce our bounce rate by 5%. So we're able to look at this from a lot of different parts of our, our, our uh, network map. And so we can say, OK, if we can change this one thing, users will stay engaged longer or at least message more. Um, and we do this through a lot of data science. And we have a data science uh, intern who could go on and on and on about how he actually built it. But the, uh, I guess the best way to explain it is he's built a lot of systems that help randomize different parts of the conversation, looking at the different conversation flows that happened before and seeing, OK, what if I suggest that a user goes this way versus that way? So he can spin up uh, a bunch of different Lambda instances on AWS and then try out these conversation flows and hypothesize what a, what's a different route that you know, this would happen, simulated under about 1,000 different uh, conversation flows. Um, and this has been very helpful. We've been able to make almost real-time changes once we see the, these things, because an editor can come in and see that, say, oh, I'm going to shift this. I'm going to point the, the user to go in a different direction. Um, but Poncho's biggest strategy still is on broadcast. You know, a user is only going to talk about the weather so much, but the user wants to know the weather every day. And which is why notifications are a big part of how we engage users, both SMS, email, apps, and the bot. Um, so we built out a whole dashboard system for scheduling out broadcasts for not only just the weather, but other experiments that we're trying out, such as a running forecast or horoscopes or other bits. Um, we've also been trying this concept of what we call follow-ons. So we can push the user a weather message. 
they look at it, maybe they open it up a couple hours later. We can now use the read receipts from Kick and Facebook and other platforms to then say, oh, they just read this, let's send them an additional message prompting them to go to something else or do something next. And of course, we've, been, we've added in a lot of targeting conditions. So we can target messages specific to one location or even a condition of the weather, temperature range, gender, whatever else that we know about a user, we can find ways to target that user. Um, and we've been doing a lot recently with election coverage in uh, the, the states, finding out where a user is at a specific time, message them and say, hey, by the way, don't forget to register to vote because voting's important and we don't want Trump. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, we like to say that we built the most popular bot. You know, we think we did. Uh, I mean, there, I mean, if you look at place, our bots like Swell and other companies, like, yeah, maybe we don't have the same type of users, but we feel that we have the most engaging, most popular conversational bot on Facebook. Um, and we start off with weather because people need it every day. It changes, it's something different, but people will respond to weather. And we focus on these conversational changes because once we can talk about the weather, we can then prompt them to go to something else. And personalization is also a big part of this. This is why we ask the user for their location. It's why we then, with some of our follow-ons, ask little questions to learn a little bit more about the user so then we can target them a little bit more and write more conversation flows and point things in the different direction for a user once they keep on coming back to Poncho. And our secret sauce is just this emotional connection. People like Poncho because it's not just another weather bot. It's not just another weather app. There's fun design, there's a playfulness, there's references to pop culture, jokes, and even when we fail, we try to make it humorous. And so, like I said, stats are a big, big part of this. So retention is something that we're really focused on. And over the past three months, we spent a lot of time trying to get better at this. Uh, in May, our retention was maybe 20% on day one. And of course, by day seven, you know, we're about 15%. Uh, just through a lot of our, you know, looking at conversation flows and engagement, we've been able to push that close to uh, about 35% uh, in July. In August, on day seven, we've been able to hit 50% retention rate and seeing it drop off close to about 45, 50%. And this is just for August. We've been seeing this continue to grow as we continue to improve our conversation flows and understanding how users go through our network map. So what's next for us? Uh, Kick is on the, uh, on the list of things to launch next. This will probably be coming out in the next week or so, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we're also interested in how we can respond through voice systems. Chat is very interesting, but voice is also something that we want to do next. It's also a big challenge, because how does a cat talk? I don't know. Um, and we're also experimenting, trying to think about what's next. You know, Not only content, but you know, how do you do expressions? How do you do anything else? So you know, we're even looking at HoloLens and other AR and VR applications as well. Um, we're also doing vertical expansion. We're actively testing horoscope content right now. And we're looking at what's next besides that. There's uh, love advice, election coverage, so much more. Um, and we're also making more weekly engagements. So with KickBot, we're going to try to, uh, we're at least aiming to do one new weekly engagement a week. So one of the first ones that we're going to launch with is this pizza maker flow. And the user can go in, add toppings, creates this custom image for them, prompts them to share. And with system, uh, these sharing feedback loops that we built into the bot, we're hopefully able to grab new users and also make this a fun, enjoyable experience for everyone on it. Um, and like I said, election coverage has been very well and has been very well received in the bot. Um, and we're hiring, so if you guys know anybody, we're looking for a tech lead and a bot interaction developer in New York. And you can find us on Messenger, iOS, Android, all the, the usual places. Um, so if there's any questions, I would love to answer them. Yes, oh, there are already hands up, three at once. Okay, let's start with the first one here, please. How much of your, your, your interaction with, with uh, your customers is about notifications and how, mu how much is about the, the, the the user actually asking Poncho mm -hmm. about, about the weather? Our notifications are, you know, it's about 60 to 70%. But that notification prompt then elicits continued responses. Uh, how did you consider with AI or anything, let's say, a ready, ready product for, for modeling the, uh, the conversation part? Can you say that again? Uh, did you consider with AI or any other, let's say, oh. ready solutions to, to model the conversation part? Yes. So when I said uh, before, like, we made it as dumb as possible, Right after launch, the next big step was to add NLP and stuff. So we use Wit AI. We're talking to other partners. We've been experimenting with other systems as well to make the system smarter. Just at launch, we had to make it as dumb as possible to get out the door. OK, there were two more. Uh, satisfied? OK, great. Please. Hi. Um, what would you say that is the biggest difference between an app which you have and a chatbot? I noticed when you come to Poncho landing page, it's uh, everything is about the app. 
I think about chatbots. So mm-hmm. Why this decision and what would you say that are the biggest differences that you notice <coughs> now? Of, yeah. Um, that is actually a good question. First off, we need to change our website. <laughs> that is on the that's on the roadmap, but not one I was going to share. But the website definitely needs to change at some point too. Um, but you know, we had to spend a lot of time improving our internal tools on the back end. So we built an API system early on for a, you know the SMS and email, and that API is a couple of years old. So and it only focused on the United States. So we had to spend a lot of time internationalizing internationalizing our weather API system. Uh, also figuring out what's a better strategy for delivering editorial content internationally. So it took a lot of time for us to get to that point. Um, and so when we first also launched the apps, they were, they were only US. And you know, But seeing the growth with Messenger, seeing all this stuff, like we realized actually what people wanted more was interactions with Boncho and being able to just get the basic information, but still be able to figure out what they want to do next. You know, We'll still continue to support apps, but our focus now is messaging content. The apps do provide fun, playful experiences, but it's very static in that sense, almost like looking at a normal web page. You know, we do want to find new engaging ways, and we love just making it as fun as possible for users. Yeah, and just you know, follow up on that. So, it's the discovery process is so much different between the apps and, and chatbots, right? Mm-hmm. So, when you have an app installed on your phone, it, it reminds you. You can see there is an icon. You can also see the, you can see the Bible icon. Okay, I have three new messages. Something that reminds you. When you have a chatbot, it goes down in the inbox. There's new messages. You don't see it. So, how how is how do you compare this retention in, in between the app and the chatbot? So what what can you do in the chatbot besides, of course, pushing notifications and, and pushing the content to, to the user? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a really good question because, at least for us, the apps are really also the apps are really well for delivering uh, push notification content. You know, it's really easy to see that on your lock screen, whatever else. But we actually find that most people don't open up the app. Once they install it, they played around with it a couple times. They do like the notifications, though. With Messenger, like you do see it at the top. It also shows up on your lock screen or in your notification center as well. But because you get buttons, you get something else to do, it tricks the user into interacting more. And with our follow-on system as well, like they get something, they're looking at it, and then they see Poncho responding again. So they're like, oh, Poncho's asking me a question. Maybe I should respond. And with these follow-ons, we see a 30 to 40% engagement rate just from the follow-on. So with that, we can then start continuing this message flow and keep the user going for a couple minutes. I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, like you know, if we can capture users for a minute to five minutes, that's really great. And the whole idea behind BuzzFeed was this uh, idea of you know, you're bored at work, you have five minutes, what do you want to look at? With Poncho, we kind of want to do something similar. You have 30 seconds, you have a minute, you're waiting for the bus or whatever else, you're like, oh, let me check the weather. Oh, Poncho also asked me this question. What else is next? Oh, OK, tap, tap, type some message. And we hope that that's a fun, engaging experience for users. Thank you. Cool. Another satisfied question, please. I was wondering if the dry script resources that you have, is that open source? The content management system is not, although that's, aside from Poncho questions, that's actually probably one of the other biggest questions we get. Um, I'm happy to talk to you afterwards. and share some secrets and tips and point you in the right direction on some of that. OK, some sweet secrets shared after. Yes. I hope there were already some included in the talk, but we, <laughs> we <laughs> and okay. there's another. Uh, we still have um, three more minutes, okay. so that's OK. Uh, what would you say is the, the, the biggest take of, of um, take out on the, on the referrals? You did a lot of experiments to, from the start about like rewards and, and umbrellas and okay. stuff like that. So what did you learn? What's the best way in, in, in messaging um, in chatbots about with the referrals and sharing and keeping the retention at the end of the cycle? Mm-hmm. So actually, we did not do the referral system with Messenger. Okay. It was just we didn't have enough time to implement that in. Yeah, I mean, with the app. But with the apps, yeah. App, yeah. So just to clarify on this question, uh, one of the strategies that we did with email and SMS and later on in the apps was this referral system. So every user got a referral code. If they told their friends to sign up with it, after a couple of signups, they get free sunglasses or a shirt or an umbrella, um, and that's that's worked pretty well. I mean, you know, it, it's it's a f- it's a form of growth. It's a form of marketing. Uh, with the bots, it's been a bigger struggle because we're also at the limitation of what Facebook allows us to do and how much we're going to get featured by Facebook. So you know, we also spend a lot of time trying to find the content that we can get somebody to share, and more importantly, focus on the product and the experience. So when somebody says, "Hey, there's this really cool bot called Poncho." you're more likely to have your friend recommend that and share that out rather than being incentivized by referral, you know, swag or, you know, um, seeing an ad or whatever else. So, 
you know, we're also really excited about Kick Launch because we've built in all these cool sharing mechanisms. We're building new content, trying new, you know, basically new verticals and just seeing what, what sticks and what doesn't. And hopefully some more of this viral growth will kick in through the Kick platform. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And, and if you guys have any other questions, I'll be out back. Yeah. And even if you just want some stickers or something, just come by. Yeah, he loves spirit. That's the th first thing he gave me before. And hi, it was like, here, yes. sticker. So, so sticker, stickers are one good referral. Bumping stickers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. That was um, the last insight you gave us, stickers. Do you have some more stickers? Yes, I do. Okay, great. So if you want stickers or advice or some more secrets, you can find him, but now we can give him a yeah. round of applause. Thanks. You deserved it. Thank you.